This is the GTN show and this week we have had a hectic time trying to keep up with all the latest tech announcements and releases. So today we have a bit of a tech special for you. We do. We also have some news from Jan Fredino. He is announcing his 2019 racing Heather, calendar. Heather, look, I don't really care about Jan. I actually care about the fact that you really made fun of my dive last week. So I think you and I, we need to go and do a little bit of a dive off. So come on, yeah. off to the pool. You and me, come on. I've been told. See you guys, best of luck. I'm not overly happy with what you said about my dive last week in the show. So we're here, we're at the swimming pool, and we're gonna do a little bit of a dive off. Oh my goodness, well, I mean, I was feeling very confident in the warmth and comforts of the set. Less so now, when I can't actually remember the last time I had a dive, but there's nothing left for it. I've been practicing. There's a lot of finger pointing. It's time for a dive off. Well, I mean, my goggles stayed on my face. And that was the first time I have dived into a swimming pool and I can't remember how long. So considering it wasn't too bad, although I know my coach, if he saw my hands, they weren't quite together. So it's a little bit disappointed in my entry. Underwater, I think was pretty spot on. Mark's fair, but I don't think he's gonna give me any favors on this one. To be honest, I actually think that was quite a well executed dive by my fairly low standards. I'll be honest, and I wouldn't tell Heather, but I think she's actually a lot better driving than I am. Wow, you really showed him there, Heather. Well, I'd like to think so, but you might be wondering why we're bothering to even look at dives, because I mean, it's a pretty small part of maybe some races that you do. Yeah, I mean, it is actually very crucial for some of those races where we do actually have a dive start. So it is worth actually trying to practice your dive start if not just impress everyone at the swimming pool. Yeah, it's always good for training. If you end up swimming with a swim squad and you've got to do some dive starts, then you don't want to embarrass yourself. Yeah, well, we've actually done a video recently on how to perform the dive start. We've done a nice sort of step-by-step -step process through that. And it really is really crucial that you do break down the dive start when you're practicing it and making sure that you nail each step. And as I explained in the video, it's all about imagining a hoop on the surface of the water. And as Heather demonstrated, oh, thank you. you've got to get your whole body through that hoop, hands, head, shoulders, all the way through to yeah. your feet rather than belly flopping. Don't want to belly flop. But you also don't obviously want to be going directly straight down through it like you would see a high board diver. As much as that looks pretty, you're going to take a long time to come back up again. Or as Tom last demonstrated in our GCN dive comp. So yeah, yeah um, but this also leads us on quite nicely to uh, what is the easiest triathlon start in a triathlon? I mean, we have dive start, beach start, Deep, deep water, water start, and of course the rolling start, which is Could more or less a beach start them, yeah. or something. Um, now, what's your preference? Um, I don't really know because I've had sort of mixed experiences of all of them. I mean, I think I would like a dive start because I can dive in, but I've, as an age group, I've not really had that experience. Only at, at World Championships, but it was a rolling start, so it's probably not quite the equivalent to dive start experience that you've had. I don't, mm. know. don't I know. Mean, yeah, I I wouldn't say my dive starts bad by any means, but I do like the roughness of a deep <laughs> water start or like legging it in from a beach start. Um, but I know that obviously deters a lot of people mm. and that's quite a scary aspect. So that that is a really interesting debate. So, and I think maybe that does depict events people enter. Yeah, as a but then also with the deep water start, if you are a weaker swimmer, you do have the option of being a little bit further back from the front and going wider. Whereas like the pontoon start that I did when we started in the water, we're all in a straight line and you couldn't really choose where you were going to go. And I actually paused for a couple of seconds just to let the madness go, as, yeah. even as a strong swimmer, because I was, I was holding on and I was squashed in like this. Whereas if you're in the water, you've generally have a little bit more space because you're treading water. I agree, you. and but maybe it is also a bit of practice. So I'd say for the dive star, if you are someone who's going to be scared in that situation, you go for the edges. So you yeah. try, you literally wait yeah. to the end and nip on the edge. If you can fit there, yeah, I guess it's... Yeah, exactly. So with all of this, it does take a little bit of practice and I do appreciate everyone has their preference. Yeah. Um, so what is the easiest or the best triathlon start? Yeah. Well, we're going to throw to a poll and we're going to ask you guys and just see what your preference is. So we've got the dive start. 
Yep, then the deep water start. The beach start. The rolling start. And then, of course, other. So, as always, um, drop that in the poll just above Heather's head there. But now for last week's poll. Yeah, well, last week it was the big money question. And we wanted to know whether you would rather win $1 million or become world champion in Kona. And I actually haven't looked at the results, so it was fairly close, closer than it I expected. Was very close. The comments didn't look as close as it was going to be. I mean, yeah. as as much as a million dollars sounds absolutely brilliant, it actually came in last place, so that was 42%, but obviously fairly well split there. That's yeah. not a massive difference. Yeah, and then the winning was obviously to win Kona World Championships. 58% of you opted for that. And I did see some of the comments that were kind of alluding to the fact that if you won the World Championships, then hopefully, in theory, you could then make $1 million from it if you've got good sponsors behind you. And this is triathlon, though. You are, um, yeah, if you're media savvy, but, um, you know, it's not quite as black and white as that, so who knows? Right, this one is for all of you young budding triathletes out there who want to know more about the sport. We have this essential guide to kids triathlon. Yeah, and this is by Justin and Caroline Hattie, who are self-described passionate triathlete parent and kids coaches. And between them, they have developed this book that is primarily designed and focused towards kids, but also has some pretty handy tips and advice for the parents out there. Yeah, I mean, whether you're new to racing or you've already raced a few seasons, it's got race tactics, it's got training tips, it's got technical advice, really does have everything covered. It's also got a bit of Vicky Holland in there. Yeah, forward from Vicky Holland, so, I mean, that gives it some credibility for sure. Okay, now for our tech special, and as Heather and Fraser were filming the show last week, SRAM were busy launching and releasing their new SRAM Red Axis group set, which is a big update on their very popular wireless group set, the SRAM Red ETAP group set. And we hope you like change because there is a heck of a lot of change with this. Yeah, I mean, it's gone from, they've, they've made it at 12 speed, which is pretty massive news, isn't it really? And um, with that, it means it's easy to adapt to a one by or a two by. so you've got options there. So the gearing ratio is gonna be completely different. And to be able to adapt to that, they've had to adapt the chain massively and some big changes there. They have, so they've got a slightly thinner chain, but not just that, it's also flat on the outer edge, which is, absolutely crazy. It's completely different from anything we've seen before. And they say that it's smoother, it's quieter, and it's just more efficient in its transition through the gears. Um, but to reinforce that thinner chain, they've actually added a little bit of material to the top. And with all of this, they've also got an app that you can access the group set component tree between and completely customize it. So if you're running a one by, then you can customize and set up perfectly for that one by setup. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's set up for tech geeks as well. Not maybe geeks, but people like you, Mark, yeah. who kind of love playing with apps and stuff like that. I just want to get on my bike and ride it. But I mean, if you set it up for me, I'd love to give it a go. I also think it just looks beautiful. Um, maybe it's just because it's different. I don't know, but yeah. it's amazing. Well, we've got another one here. We've got the Zip VUCA Aero, which is their base bar, essentially. And this is uh, just an update on their previous design. It looks largely the same, but they say that you can now reach up to 6,000 unique yeah. positions. I find that hard to imagine. I mean, I don't think my body could find 6,000 <laughs> unique positions, but I mean, within that, they've also got a special cap that you can fit your junction box in, so to make it all more aerodynamic and sleek, and sticking with sleek, I think it's coming in a matte black as well, so it's gonna look, Very nice. yeah, it's gonna look good anyway. Well, sticking with tech, we've got some numbers in from Zwift. It was the Tour de Zwift in January where everyone was feeling enthusiastic for the new year. And it turned out that 119,000 Zwifters took part in the Tour de Zwift. Actually, almost 25,000 people completed all nine stages, which meant they then rewarded with this special Tour de Zwift kit. Yeah, and actually there are 468 events in total, which covers all the time zones, mm -hmm. obviously, for the nine stages, which is a staggering amount of events, um, just to accommodate everyone. Uh, but we've got some of the stats here. The Zwift has climbed a mind-boggling 180 million meters, which is halfway to the moon. Yeah, I want to say I'm back, but it isn't. They're no. still going. Well, you've got a little bit more climbing to do, but that is still a lot of climbing. Um, and then almost two million Zwifters got ride-ons. It just shows what the support is out there on that network platform. And to add Riding to that, along with other people. Yeah, and to add to that, we had 34 professional cyclists and triathletes getting involved. So if you got involved yourself in the Tour de Zwift, do let us know in the comment section below. And if you saw one of the pros out there. Yeah. Right, our last bit of tech comes from a brand called Runscribe. Now, this is a foot pod that was kind of ahead of its time when it first initially launched. Um, but they really battled with technology, not really 
keeping up with them and being able to be compatible with the pod itself. Well, it's now taken a big step forward and back ahead of the game because this new launch Runscribe will basically apparently allow the foot pod to give feedback on how your foot is landing. So something I find you know, really interesting and so important when you're going to buy a new shoe or you want to try and analyze your gait. And it can, in theory, give you the feedback of whether you're a heel striker, midfoot, forefoot, and what type of shoe would suit you. So it can really help with buying that trainer and also maybe sorting out Massively, injuries. Massively, yeah. I mean, they call this shoe print, this new technology they've launched. But yeah, I mean, I, I just find that fascinating looking at after my run and just day to day improving my running. Yeah. Um, but anyway, away from all the tech now, because that was great fun, but we've got to <laughs> move on. Uh, we've got some new news and that is regarding none other than Jan Frodeno and his 2019 calendar. Yeah, much awaited. I know a lot of um, the pros will probably be thinking, oh no, we need to change our calendar <laughs> now. Maybe they don't want to be racing against the former world champion, but he's going to start his season off in Oceanside on April the 6th, though. Not Which very far away. I know, and I, I was I found that quite surprising, just given that he's coming back from injury and he's been quite open on Instagram about his fitness. Yeah. Um, and I just find, you know, one of the toughest 70.3s outside of the world champs. Yeah. And very soon. Um, but I guess it's close to all his brands and sponsors. And maybe know. he's not afraid to just put himself out there and, and then he'll know where he is compared to his competitors. He does seem to like that style, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, but he's going to follow that up with the Bruce Schutten Triathlon in Germany, if I said that right, if you, do you know of that event? That's, own it. That's on the 5th of May, so a month later. So he's kind of doing spacing each race out by a month because then it's the beginning of June when he's got when it's the Ironman 70.3 Krakow, Krakow in Krakow. Germany. Um, and then at the end of that month, it's Ironman Frankfurt in Germany where he'll be trying to defend defend his title from last year. And then the two obvious events remain with the Ironman 70.3 World Champs in Nice in September. And then obviously the big one back in Kona in October. A nice 50-50 split with Germany and the rest of the world. Yeah, he's sticking to his roots there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the most iconic triathlon events in the triathlon calendar, and particularly in America, is the Wildflower Triathlon. And they've had quite a tough time over the years because between 2013 and 2016, they had to amend their run course due to droughts. In 2017, they had to cancel the event altogether due to very severe drought. And then they came back in 2018, which everyone's very excited about. And in 2019, this year, they've had to announce that they're going to have to cancel due to several external circumstances, which they haven't explained, but obviously this is very bad news. Yeah, it is, but they have at least sort of, um, given the athletes who'd entered this year um, entry into next year, so it does leave the hope there for 2020. And it's such an iconic event, mm. so we really do hope that we get to see it again. But now moving over to Dubai, there's a challenge going on right now by Nick Watson and his son, Rio. They are attempting to do seven 70.3 Ironman distance triathlons in the seven different Emirates over seven days. So in the UAE, they're going to finish, well, it's happening right now. They started on Sunday. They're midway through. Yeah, so they are midway through. They finish on Saturday in Dubai. So if you're in the region, go and give them a cheer. Now, this is to raise awareness of disability and sport with the buildup to the Special Olympics World Games that are happening in Abu Dhabi in March. Now, Rio actually was born with a rare chromosome disease. So Nick Watson, his father, is going going to be towing him in the swim in a kayak, then he's got a specially adapted bicycle, and then finally runs pushing him. So it's a real team effort, and if you do want to support them, you can just use the hashtag TryWithRio. Right, it's time for caption competition again this week. And we had that photo of an athlete sort of diving, whether it was intentional or not, with a beach start. And we had a few to choose from this week. Yeah, Can like we running on water. We, um, from Travis McGarry said, something squishy just touched my leg. Ew. <laughs> Um, next, our second runner-up for this week comes from Barry Moran. Look at me, I'm a dolphin. <laughs> uh, but our winner is Ahmed Bassam, and they said runner-up for the most graceful racer. And I think they're being clever there because they're saying runner-up, and it looks like he's running on water. Anyway, Let's see. Ahmed Bassam, you are the winner of the caption competition this week, so get in touch and we'll send you a cap your way. Yeah. But now for this week's photo, and it's from the Winter Triathlon World Championships we just had. Uh, this past weekend. And um, I think we can see some angels in the background. I sort of like this because it's kind of like, I imagine this like, he, he's kind of like James Bond running off through the snow and it's like he's shot these people behind his leg. Maybe that's why he's dark and sinister. <laughs> uh, is that why you like it? I mean, I, I just liked it because that would be me lying in the snow doing <laughs> snow angels. And it was last week, so. <laughs> I just sort of think of these winter triathlon people all stealthy and like they have their guns for the biathlon yeah. and all this. And <laughs> 
anyway, anyway moving on. yeah we'd love to see what your minds think and what you come up with because I reckon you've got um, just as good imagination as Mark has so do leave your caption suggestions in the comment section below well now for the race news and this weekend we had the ITU World Cup over in Cape Town. In the men's race it was number one seeded Richard Murray that actually had to withdraw prior to the event due to injury and we understand he's actually suffering with a slight foot injury at the moment. Well this opened up the doors to Commonwealth Games champion Henry Schumann, who expected to just run away with the win but it didn't pan out that way at all because it was the Britain young super talent Alex Yee that came charging through from the second pack on the run to take the win. In second it was Tony Smagorovitz and in third it was Yao Silva. Now over into the women's race it was Rachel Klammer that was really quite determined to take that win but as they came into T2 the gap had really become quite a lot smaller between the front pack and the second pack and this really opened up the doors for A. Ueda from Japan who came came through to take the win overall. And in second, it was Summer Rappaport, and in third, it was Tamara Gorman. Well, this weekend, we also had the ITU Winter Triathlon World Championships, which took place over in Italy. Now, this consisted of an eight kilometer run, followed by 14 kilometer mountain bike, and then finishing with a 12 kilometer cross country ski. The men's race was won by Pavel Andri from Russia, and the women's race was won by Daria Rogizina, also from Russia. And that pair also went on to take the first ever title of the Winter Triathlon Mixed Team Relay, which they call a two by two format, which consisted of a two kilometer run, followed by a four kilometer mountain bike, and then finishing with a three kilometer cross country ski. Okay, it's time to have a look at some of the photos that you guys have sent in. And we're going a little exotic this week because we are heading to Costa Rica for a moment. This first photo has been sent in by Sarah in San Jose, apparently training for an Xterra event that she's got in May. But um, obviously not on this bike. She's got a rather old um, looking spin bike, which is perfect apparently for giving her legs a little bit of a spin out, but a bit of a rest because it's very hilly where she lives. So um, a nice alternative. And it's been adapted slightly with a few little add-ons, I think, just to make training a little bit more comfortable with that um, somewhere just to store maybe a phone or something in a cut out bucket on top of the spin maybe bike. just to catch a sweat, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but also what I love here is just the fact that you've got a bit of natural resistance from the dirt or rust, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you've, uh, yeah, you're making it hard for yourself there, Sarah. So if you want to make it easy, just give you Oh, you've clean. been told. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Right? Look at yeah, that setting. Okay. Amazing. amazing. I know. Well, we're staying with gorgeous settings with this next photo as we head to Gambia. Um, this one comes in from Tall and it's Kololai Beach Club in the Gambia. Wow. Yeah. And they said, big thanks to me because they are using their bungee cord um, in the pool because obviously the pool isn't long enough. So basically like a static swim session. Yeah. Um, so yeah, brilliant. I mean, that Glad. Pool still looks longer than my gym pool. I could, um, the way I'm swimming at the moment, that would be long enough for me. But oh. good, good work taking Mark's tip there. And they've also said that because now they're static, they, um, they're they able to film themselves underwater. So they're getting some technical oh. um, technical feedback as well. So Very another, useful, point, yeah. Um, but now on to another pain cave setup, and this one comes in from Emma on a Canyon Speedmax. And she said that both me and my boyfriend had four hours turbo session oh, planned in. I mean, that's pretty horrific. I can't yeah. imagine ever doing that. Um, <laughs> so they managed to find an old turbo trainer and place their bikes almost nose to nose, and they did a big Zwift session together, and actually, um, which is quite nice ahead of Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow. Um, her boyfriend actually added 40 kilograms to his weight on Zwift, so then they could ride up out to us together. Yes, because they were obviously, they'd been set the, the power that they had to ride at according to their coach or their program. Um, I mean, that might have taken a little bit of calculation as well to work mm. out exactly so you could be riding at the same pace at your set watts, but dedication, and yeah, yeah I think that's very sweet. And they say, um, Emma says here, relationship advice for cyclists and triathletes. Nice. There you go. Very good. Um, and now our final one comes in from Yoshinori, and this is from Tokyo. And if you want some advice on how to make the most of space, now <laughs> watch this now because this guy has not only crammed a very nice set, well, Selection. array of <laughs> zip wheels into this space, he's got a P3 on his turbo trainer, on his elite turbo trainer. He's got a bike hanging up on the wall, he's got his treadmill. <laughs> uh, beside that, all alongside a desk office space uh, that all just kind of 
flips in and flips out and kind of, I don't know. This I mean, is... I would feel claustrophobic in there. It's it's impressive how he's it's managed like that. It's a two I mean, metre squared you're, room. You're kind of sat at your desk with your treadmill like over your shoulder. I mean, it's one way to definitely make you feel that you need to go do your training. It's actually given us the size of the apartment oh, wow. here. It's a seven square, seven square metres, so... That's, that's impressive. You think but... treadmills are pretty large, aren't they? Once yeah, you put one of those um... in. And he's even got his work ties on the back of the door just to prove it's definitely his office. So, I mean, yeah. Well, if you can do better than that, we'd love to see it. So please do send in your pain caves um, using our GTN photo uploader. Well, that's it for another week of the GTN show. If you've liked the look of the jumpers or any of the kit you see us wearing in any of the videos, then just click on the link to the shop and then you can get your hands on your very own GTN merchandise. If you've enjoyed this, hit the thumb up like button. And to make sure you get every single video from GTN, just hit the globe to subscribe. And. If you are doing any interesting training at the moment or any races coming up, we'd love to hear from you. So do go to the comment section below and just let us know. It's nice to chat about. We might yeah, feature you in the show sure. next week. Um, if you'd like to see that dive video that we were speaking about earlier, a nice step-by-step -step instruction as to how to do that, then you can click just here. And if you want some tips from an expert, we've made a video of tips with a physiotherapist to keep you on track with your training. And that video is just here.